I'm dying. No, scratch that. I'm pretty much already dead already. I've been dead for a long time now, it seems. I just didn't even know it. Right now, my body is beginning to shut down. My flesh is rotting away and falling off of my bone. I can no longer move around or even leave this bed. The doctors have pretty much given up on me, it seems. I guess there's nothing that anyone can really do except for wait. I might as well begin my story. It began this past January when I woke up one morning and felt just a little off somehow. I couldn't quite put my finger on it at the time, but something just was not right. Stumbling to the bathroom from the weakness, I looked in the mirror and was absolutely shocked at how pale I'd become. My skin had taken on a sickly gray pallor that couldn't be explained by a lack of sunlight alone. I splashed water on my face and took a hot shower, but the color still did not return to my cheeks afterwards. As the morning wore on, I became aware of how dulled my senses were. Colors looked muted, sounds were faint and distorted, and I couldn't smell the smog from the city bases or the coffee from my local Starbucks downstairs. As usual, I took the bus to work and watched the city sweep with dull eyes. There was a sense of fatigue deep inside of my bone marrow and I couldn't seem to shake it off no matter how much coffee I had already drank. When I got to the office building where I worked as an accountant, I immediately immersed myself in my work. I began to take calls, answered emails, and added up transactions, all while feeling lifeless and detached from reality. When a colleague made a snide remark about me being a woman in a male-dominated work environment, I didn't so much as shoot a burning glare his way, I simply didn't have the energy to care, which is very unlike me. Normally, I would have assumed I was coming down with the flu, but other than my pale skin and sluggishness, I had no other symptoms of any illness, at least none that I knew of. I considered calling my general doctor, but decided to wait a few days and see if I improved on my own first. That Saturday, I went out to get drinks with a group of my friends figuring a little fun might revive me. In order to counteract the ugly pallor of my skin, I applied copious amounts of blush on my cheeks. Since I didn't usually wear that much makeup, the girls noticed and asked me about it. Haven't you noticed what I look like? I exclaimed. I'm completely washed out. No, you aren't, said Savannah, my best friend. You look great. Don't just say that to make me feel better. I'm not. You don't look pale, Laura. The others agreed. I was simply confused. Could this all be in my head? But what, what, what about the sluggishness? The dull senses? The constant fatigue? Was it all just in my mind fucking with me? Finally, I caved and made an appointment with my doctor. She ran a battery of tests, all of which came back negative. Maybe you aren't getting enough vitamins, she suggested. Try switching your diet a little bit. I began to take supplements and made sure I was getting enough vitamin C and protein, but nothing seemed to help. I began to lose weight. My lips became perpetually cracked, and my ha hair appeared to be thinning, coming out in clumps. Nobody but me noticed anything physically wrong, not even my own family. I ended up grow growing used to the perpetual fatigue, but my senses were seemingly becoming worse. I felt so detached that I no longer had any emotions. One evening, while out for dinner with Savannah, I saw my ex-boyfriend, George, with another woman. I recognized her as a girl I'd met the summer before when we took a road trip to New Orleans. I felt no anger, no jealousy. I felt just nothing inside. I think you might be depressed, Savannah told me. I don't think so, I muttered. I wasn't happy, but I was way too numb to be sad for certain. My physical condition seemed to worsen. Three months after the symptoms first began, I was down two dress sizes and had lost so much hair, I had to eventually buy a wig. 
I looked like a walking corpse, and still nobody seemed to notice. Desperate, I began to do my own research and came across something called the Cotard Delusion, or Walking Corpse Syndrome. Walking Corpse Syndrome delusion is a mental illness in which a person believes themselves to be dead or lacking blood and organs. It is rare, but for those suffering from the delusion, it is absolutely horrifying. I wondered if walking corpse syndrome was the explanation for my strange afflictions. I certainly felt like I was dead, and since nobody else saw the physical changes I had undergone, maybe I was just insane. Although the possibility didn't quite add up with my current situation, I decided to go and see a psychiatrist. He labeled me a hypochondriac and put me on an anti-anxiety pill. They didn't help at all. One day at work, my boss called me into his office. He was worried about me because I looked so thin. The decaying began a month or two later. Patches of my skin would turn black and disintegrate. I lost sensation in my hands and feet. The smell of rotting meat formed a fog around me. I had begun to lose so much weight that I resembled a skeleton rather than that of a human being. My eyes had receded inside of my skull and my teeth had begun to turn so yellow and I could barely even walk at this point. Finally, I was checked into the hospital. Test after test revealed absolutely no problem whatsoever. No medication seemed to help. Surgery to remove the necrotic, decaying flesh failed. I overheard a doctor describe me as a living corpse. Even though I was technically alive, my body was in a state of post-mortem decay. None of this made any sense. Two months ago, I was simply sent home to die. I don't seem to have much time left, I can't bring myself to care about my impending death. I haven't felt anything real and for so long that I can remember. I've spent a lot of time wondering how this could have happened. Before it all began, I was healthy, both mental, mentally and physically. Although I've always been a bit of a skeptic, I'm beginning to believe there are other forces at work. When George and I went down to New Orleans over a year ago, we walked into a strange little shop run by an old lady who had claimed to be a witch. When I laughed at her, she glared at me with the intensity of a thousand spun suns and muttered something that sent chills down my spine. I want you to die. So you are going to die. <laughs>